Hey lovelies! So as you know, all month long, I am bringing you easy weeknight dinner ideas that your entire family will love. And today, it is all about three delicious pasta bakes. And I have to tell you, when it comes to my favorite kind of cooking, these rich, hearty comfort foods are my very, very favorites. So today, we're getting started with this incredible spinach and artichoke ravioli bake, and you're not gonna believe how simple it is to put together. Now the star of this dish, of course, is our ravioli. I'm actually using some fresh ravioli that I bought at my supermarket. You could use frozen as well here. I'm using a really simple cheese and spinach version, but if you wanted to use some chicken ravioli or some beef ravioli, those would work as well. The sauce for this bake is going to be some Alfredo sauce. I'm using a store-bought Alfredo sauce here, but if you wanted to make your own, of course, homemade can always be better, but store-bought is really, really handy when it comes to weeknight cooking. And I'm just gonna thin it out a little bit with some chicken broth. It's gonna add a little more flavor, but it's also going to help our Alfredo sauce thin out a little bit, because Alfredo sauce is notoriously thick, especially the store-bought kind. I'm just going to pour a thin layer of my Alfredo sauce on the bottom of my very well-greased baking dish. I'll just use a spoon to sort of get that spread out and then I'll put down the first layer of my ravioli. You wanna make sure you get your ravioli down in a single layer. This is one of those awesome recipes that you can ask the kids to help with if you have kids who are handy in the kitchen. Then once we've got our first layer of ravioli in the bottom of our dish, it is time to get our green on, and let's be honest, who couldn't use some more greens in their life? First up, I am going to be adding my baby spinach to this as well as some chopped artichoke hearts. Now these artichoke hearts come marinated in a jar so they already have a ton of great flavor. I like chopping them up finely and just sprinkling them on top. You can usually find artichokes like this in the pickle aisle of your supermarket. Next, I'll pour over another good layer of my Alfredo sauce, and then I'm going to repeat those layers until my baking dish is completely full. In this case, I've done three layers of ravioli. Now the secret to making this even more marvelous than it already is, is to finish this off with some shredded mozzarella cheese and some freshly grated Parmesan. And this, my friends, is ready for the oven. I like to pop this into the oven covered in foil for about 30 minutes until my ravioli is nice and tender. Then I remove the foil and let it cook up for another 10 minutes or so until my cheese is nice and bubbly and golden. Then it is just ready, it should be enjoyed. The cool part is you can put this dish together during your Sunday meal prep and then cook it up on a Monday or Tuesday night when you get home from work. It's perfect for Meatless Monday. This next recipe is a really hearty, stick to your ribs sort of dinner idea. It is my Italian pasta bake and it starts with a really yummy Italian meat sauce. I'm gonna get started with a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of a nice big oven safe skillet because I'll just assemble the entire dish right in here and then get it directly into the oven. As soon as that oil is hot, I'm going to fire up some onion as well as some red bell pepper. Once those veggies have had a chance to just soften up, we'll go ahead and add some garlic to this, because come on, it wouldn't be Italian-inspired anything if we didn't have some garlic in here. Give that garlic about 30 seconds to reach its full flavor potential, and then we can get our beef into the pan. I'm using ground beef here, but of course you could swap in some ground turkey or some ground chicken if you wanted to keep this a little lighter, or you could use some veggie crumbles if you wanted to keep this totally meatless, it's up to you. We're gonna cook our beef, breaking it up with the side of our spoon until it's no longer pink, and then we can start making our sauce. I'm adding some fire roasted diced tomatoes to this because I really love the flavor the tomatoes get when they're fire roasted. And I'm also adding some traditional tomato sauce to this as well. I'll finish that off with a good sprinkle of Italian seasoning as well as some salt and pepper. And then I'll just let this simmer away on medium heat for about 10 minutes or so. It doesn't really take very long for the flavors of this sauce to concentrate. Then once your sauce is ready, you can go ahead and add your pasta to this. Now I'm using some shells that I've just cooked and drained, but you can really use any type of pasta that you want to in this recipe. I'll give everything a good toss so those shells are well coated. Now, if you wanted to make this a little healthier, you could always add some spinach to this or even some kale. I totally intended on using some spinach here, but I actually used it in my spinach and artichoke pasta bake, and now I'm out. So, no spinach for this dish, but imagine there was spinach, how great it would be. The final touch is to cheese this up. So I've got some mozzarella cheese headed on here, as well as another good helping of freshly grated Parmesan. It makes a lot of magic happen. 
Once we've got our cheese on top, we can get this into the oven just until it is fully melted and it's become a little golden. That's how you know it is ready to be enjoyed. I promise you guys, this one is a total crowd pleaser and will quickly become a family favorite. Finally, lovelies, for something a little different but totally delicious, I am making a ham and Swiss gnocchi bake. Yeah. So for this recipe, we are going to be using some store-bought gnocchi. It's the kind you find fresh in the deli aisle at your supermarket. I'm gonna get started by melting some butter in a nice big skillet. And I'll just say it, butter melting in a skillet is one of my favorite smells ever. Once your butter is melted down, you can go ahead and add some onion to this. We're just gonna let that onion soften up a little bit in all of that butter. And then I'll add some garlic to that as well. Just as that garlic becomes fragrant, we know it is time to add our ham to this. Now this is just some deli ham. I had them cut it nice and thick and then I cut it into cubes myself. Now if you're not a fan of pork, you could actually use some smoked chicken or turkey in this recipe as well. Just get it thick cut at the deli and then cut it into cubes just like this. I like cooking it up in that onion and that garlic for about four to five minutes just until it starts to crisp up on the edges. And then we can start making our sauce. To do that, I'm going to add just a little sprinkle of flour to this. That's gonna help our sauce become nice and thick. Once my flour has had a chance to cook for just a minute or so, I'll go ahead and add some cream to this, as well as some Dijon mustard. When it comes to ham and Swiss, Dijon mustard is always welcome. Next, I'll add my shredded Swiss cheese to this, and you'll see almost instantly, you'll end up with this thick, rich, creamy sauce that is absolutely delicious. I like adding some green peas to this because of course we all need more greens in our life. And then I'll add my gnocchi to this as well. Once everything is well coated, we can transfer it into a baking dish and then I like to top it with just a little more Swiss cheese and get it into the oven for about 10 minutes or so, just until that Swiss cheese is totally melted and nice and golden on top. Guys, this is an absolute showstopper of a dish. That salty ham mixed with that sort of sweet, nutty Swiss cheese is so complimentary. And of course, who doesn't love soft, chewy gnocchi? Trust me, the first day sweater weather arrives, this is the dish you're going to want to serve. I hope you'll give all three of these delicious pasta bakes a try. If you do, tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because guys, I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all of these tasty recipes are linked in the description box below. You can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.